What's up everybody, I'm Hoops and Hip Hop, and welcome officially to the grand finale. We have covered facts on almost every single Pokemon, and today we are going to finish that off with facts on the second half of the Alola Pokedex. Last week we started covering facts on every Alola Pokemon with the first 44 in the decks, and today we are going to be covering the second 44, and that includes Meltan and Melmetal, as well as a bunch of other really cool Pokemon like Sogaleo, Lunala, and all of the Ultra Beasts. So, with that being said, why don't we go ahead and just strap in for this final episode, at least until Generation 8 comes out, of our series on facts about every single Pokemon. Starting this video off with Passimian, Passimian actually debuted into the anime in a banned episode. Episode 64 of the Sun and Moon anime was banned in the English dub before it even got a chance to premiere, as in addition to seeing Passimian for the first time in this episode, we also saw Ash dressing himself up as a Passimian, which also involved him painting his face black, which resembles the racist portrayal of black people known as blackface. Now, this isn't the first time that the Pokemon Company has had to deal with the blackface controversy, as they also had to ban some episodes involving Jinx from the the anime for the same reason. As a matter of fact, this is the first episode in the English dub to be banned since episode 250, which was a whopping 750 plus episodes before this one. When it comes to Wimpod, according to the Pokemon Sun and Moon website, due to Wimpod's nature, it will scavenge any garbage that's on the ground, and because of this, they're valued as cleaners. Due to this fact, and due to Wimpod's body style as well, these Pokemon actually heavily resemble Roombas or other similar cleaning type robots, which could actually have been a small factor in its design, given the similar way that they also kind of crawl around the floor as well. Its evolution Galissapod also has a signature move in the form of First Impression, and First Impression is rather notable in and of itself because amongst priority moves, First Impression is actually the strongest amongst all of them, having a very solid 90 base power. Moving on to Sandy Ghast, Sandy Ghast actually has the lowest base speed stat of any ghost type Pokemon. Its evolution Palosand debuted into the anime in the episode A Shivering Shovel Search, and in this episode we also see a flashback from the character Kiawe. And as a matter of fact, during this flashback we also see a character that bears a very strong resemblance to Ash. Maybe Professor Oak isn't the only one who has a long lost relative in Alola after all. The Pokemon Pukumuku has the lowest base speed stat of any water type Pokemon, and is also tied for the lowest base speed of any Pokemon with Shuckle and Munchlax. Oddly enough, Type Null is the only Pokemon whose English name is actually different from its Italian and Spanish name. In Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, Silvalli is supposed to be able to learn the three moves, Grass Pledge, Fire Pledge, and Water Pledge. However, due to a programming error, it's actually only ever able to learn the move Grass Pledge legitimately. An interesting fact about Minior is that Minior is the only Pokemon with multiple forms, where every single one of its multiple forms also have the same exact shiny. An ironic thing about Komala is that even though it is said to always be asleep, it can actually learn the move Yawn by level up, which would imply that it's awake, but it can't learn the move Snore by level up, which would imply that it's asleep. This is even worse when you consider that its ability, Comatose, would actually allow Komala to use the move Snore without actually having the sleep status condition. Moving on to Turtonator, Turtonator actually has the highest base defense stat of any Dragon type Pokemon. Togedemaru, meanwhile, has the ability to learn the most egg moves of any Generation 7 Pokemon, with 9 in total. An interesting thing about Mimikyu is that according to an official piece of Pokemon merchandise, Mimikyu's height of 8 inches does not actually count the head of the Pikachu disguise that it's wearing, and it only counts its actual body underneath. According to the Pokemon Moon Dex entry of the Pokemon Bruxish, it stuns its prey with Psychokinesis and then grinds them to mush with its strong teeth. 
Even Shelder's shell is no match for it. Now, this is rather interesting because according to Shelder's Fire Red Dex entry, it is encased in a shell that is harder than diamonds, which basically says that Bruxish has the ability to crush things that are harder than diamonds, and diamonds are pretty much the hardest thing that exists in our natural world, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and stay as far away from this Pokemon as humanly possible. Moving on to Drampa, no other Pokemon actually has the same type combination of normal dragon as Drampa does. Delmise debuted into the anime in the episode Balloons, Brione, and Belligerence, and in this episode, a small yet interesting error was specified about Delmise when the Rotom Pokedex stated that Delmise is a grass ghost type, when in reality, it is actually a ghost grass type. A very interesting thing about the Pokemon Jangmoo is that Jangmoo was actually the very first Generation 7 Pokemon to be officially designed. When it evolves into Hakamoo, it becomes the only Pokemon along with its evolution Komoo to have the dragon fighting type combination. These two Pokemon are also the only Pokemon who aren't dark types that actually have a double weakness to fairy type moves. And speaking of its evolution Komoo, Komoo is the only pseudo legendary Pokemon that is unable to have some type of type immunity. Now we're going to start getting into the legendary Pokemon of the Alola region with Tapu Koko. Tapu Koko is of course the guardian deity of Mele Mele Island, and he actually has the highest base speed stat of any fairy type Pokemon with a whopping 130 base speed. Moving on to Tapu Lele, the Pokedex talks about how this Pokemon is actually cruel, which is a bit odd considering it's a guardian deity. However, it gets even worse from here because according to the Pokemon Sun and Moon website, Tapu Lele scatters glowing scales that physically affect others, providing stimulation to their bodies and healing their illnesses or injuries. But these scales can be dangerous as well, because a body can't withstand the changes brought about by contact with too many scales at the same time time. It will scatter its scales over humans and Pokemon for its own enjoyment. While it is innocent in one sense, there is also cruelty in the way it casually brings others to ruin. So basically, Tapu Lele will just casually scatter a bunch of scales on humans and Pokemon, which can in effect kill them if they are hit by too many at the same time. And this is something that it just does for fun with no guilt or remorse whatsoever according to the Pokedex, which really makes Tapu Lele the worst guardian of anything in the history of ever. When it comes to Tapu Bulu, it is likely inspired by Lono, who is the god of agriculture, abundance, and peace in Hawaiian mythology, and this would make sense since Tapu Bulu's home is the Shrine of Abundance. However, it's actually unclear what the specific direction is on this because Tapu Bulu actually encapsulates the opposite of these qualities pretty well because the ruins of abundance where it lives are in the middle of a desert where it's kind of devoid of life, and we definitely know how it can be the opposite of peaceful as it is responsible for destroying the Tapu village. Speaking of the homes of all of the guardians, Tapu Fini resides within the Ruins of Hope on Pony Island, and this is the only one of the four guardian ruins within the Alola region whose name is essentially translated differently from Japanese to English, as in Japanese it is known as the Ruins of the Other Side. Moving on to Cosmog, even though it is adorable, it is probably the weakest legendary that we've seen so far, as it not only has the lowest base stat total of any legendary Pokemon, but it also only learns two moves total, which is the lowest number of moves that any legendary Pokemon can currently learn. Its evolution Cosmoem's claim to fame is that from its pre-evolution in Cosmog to Cosmoem, it actually undergoes the largest weight increase due to an evolution of any Pokemon, going from 0.1 kilogram as Cosmog to 999.9 kilograms as Cosmoem. This is an increase of 999,799.99%. The Sun Pokemon Sogaleo, as well as its counterpart Lunala, are the only box art legendary Pokemon currently who have an individual base stat under 90, where Sogaleo's special defense is only 89. 
Speaking of Lunala, Lunala actually loses the most weight of any Pokemon after evolving, obviously thanks to the previously mentioned Cosmoem, losing a grand total of 879.9 kilograms of weight once it evolves. Many people were initially surprised to find out that Nihilego was part rock type instead of part water type like it would seem, given that it's based on a jellyfish. However, with that being said, Nihilego is actually the only rock type Pokemon that cannot learn the move Rock Slide. For our fact on Buzzwool, in the initial version of Pokemon Sun and Moon prior to any patches or updates, Buzzwool's codename was actually misspelled in the game in Japanese as UBO2 Expansion with an extra E at the end, even though its name was spelled correctly in pre-release material. Prior to the release of Pokemon Sun and Moon, it was heavily speculated that the Pokemon Pheromosa would have some type of a relationship with Lusamine as the two characters bear a striking similarity. However, even though this relationship didn't really pan out the way people thought it would, there is still further connections between these two characters past just the initial surface, as the coloration of Pheromosa's shiny form also resembles Lusamine in her fused form with Nihilego. When it comes to electric type Pokemon, there are very few that are bigger or badder than Zerkatry, and I mean that quite literally, as not only is Zerkatry the tallest electric type Pokemon that we've currently ever seen, but it also has the highest base special attack stat of any electric type Pokemon as well. Moving on to Celesteela, Celesteela is actually tied with Cosmoem at 999.9 kilograms or 2204.4 pounds as the heaviest currently known Pokemon. Speaking of Pokemon weight, however, Kartana at 0.2 pounds or 0.1 kilogram is also tied with Ghastly, Haunter, Flabebe, and Cosmog as the lightest currently known Pokemon. And if we're going to be talking about Pokemon weight, then we can't really stop at Guzzlord because Guzzlord is very clearly a very big boy. Not only is Guzzlord the heaviest Dark-type and Dragon-type Pokemon of all currently, but he also has the highest base HP stat of all Dark-types and Dragon-types as well. Necrozma, along with Sogaleo and Lunala, are all a part of a trio that is unofficially known as the Light Trio, and Necrozma definitely has some distinct differences to its two other counterparts. However, none is more odd than the fact that Necrozma is the only member of this trio that is able to learn a move at a level that is not either level 1 or a prime number because it learns Photon Geyser at level 50. Next up is Magearna, and Magearna was actually the very first Generation 7 Pokemon to be officially revealed. Speaking of reveals, Marshadow's name was actually known well before we knew what it actually looked like when its name was revealed in a tweet of its trademark on April 10th of 2016. From here, speculation began to run rampant as to what this Pokemon could look like, and one of the most prominent and believed leaks at the time was that Marshadow was an extremely gorgeous dolphin Pokemon that had an ability that allowed it to be the psychic type along with a second random type that changed every time it entered the battlefield. Needless to say, those leaks couldn't have been more fake. According to Poiple's designer, James Turner, Poiple is actually partially based on a bee larva, and as a matter of fact, it is from this inspiration that Poiple actually gets its shiny colors of white and gold. And when it comes to its evolution, Naganadel, Naganadel is actually the tallest currently known poison-type Pokemon. Moving on to Stack Attacka, Stack Attacka actually debuted into the anime in the episode The Long Vault Home, and a rather funny thing happens in this episode because during a scene in which Ash actually crashes into Stack Attacka, he lets out some tears which actually stay on the screen or camera, if you will, afterwards, effectively breaking the fourth wall. Next up is our boy Blacephalon, and in addition to being one of the stranger Ultra Beasts, Blacephalon also has the honor of having a signature move in the form of Mind Blown. Now, Mind Blown is a very interesting move, but the thing we are going to highlight about it here is that if a shiny Pokemon, aka shiny Blacephalon, uses Mind Blown, it's actually going to use the shiny form of Blacephalon's head, which is blue, rather than the normal white one, and even though this only applies to Blacephalon, this actually makes it the only move whose animation changes depending on whether or not the Pokemon is shiny. 
And we have now officially made it to the final Pokemon of the Alola Pokedex with Zera Aura, and oddly enough, Zera Aura is actually the only electric type mythical Pokemon. And now we come to the last two Pokemon on the Pokedex currently, which are not necessarily Alola Pokemon, but definitely are Generation 7, and that would be Meltan and Melmetal. Now, an interesting thing about Meltan is that Meltan's body is based on Mercury, which occurs on Earth in the form of the stone Cinnabar. This ties into the Kanto region where it debuted because of Cinnabar Island, and sure enough, both Meltan and Melmetal's master trainers appear in the Pokemon Mansion on Cinnabar Island. Island, confirming that at least in some capacity, this factors into Meltan's background. Maybe as we learn more about Meltan once it becomes incorporated into one of the more core series games, we will learn more about this possible backstory. And finally, the last Pokemon we have to cover, period at least until Generation 8 comes out, is Melmetal. Now, Melmetal is based on a Mercury Amalgam, which is a substance that is essentially Mercury combined with another metal. Now, one of the few metals that cannot form an amalgam with Mercury is iron, which is actually why you see those dark gray chunks of iron embedded into Melmetal's body, which also explains its signature move, Double Iron Bash. Well, there we have it, everybody. That is officially 88 facts on every single Alola and Generation 7 Pokemon, and it's also 809 facts on every single Pokemon pre-Generation 8. I cannot believe that I actually covered a fact on every single Pokemon, and frankly, it's all thanks to you guys supporting these videos that allowed me to pursue the rest of this series and covering every region. So, from the bottom of my heart, I really want to thank you because this series has been a lot of fun to do. If you guys enjoyed the video, though, be sure to give it a like and let me know down in the comments below which one of these facts was your favorite, or if you have another fact that you would like to share. If you are new to the channel and you want to eventually see the facts on Generation 8 Pokemon as well as a bunch of other Pokemon related videos, be sure to subscribe for more Pokemon content every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And if you like Pokemon music and remixes, consider following me on Spotify because all of the support there goes to directly support the channel here. Anyways, with all of that being said, I will be back on Tuesday for another video, so be sure to hit that notification bell so you can be notified as soon as it goes live, and until then, as always, you know I love you guys, and I will smell you guys later.